So today we have here um, a really awesome developer who's created an amazing app on the app platform. So why don't we uh, give, give a great introduction? Hey, Hakeem, it's Colin. Uh, so I'm a, new, I'm a new Flutter developer. <laughs> yeah, and what, what have you built for us? So uh, I was challenged by a friend of mine, Kevin, uh, to learn, learn Flutter. I've been down in the dark world uh, for quite a while. <clears throat> and um, as an engineer, uh, I'm much more happy on sort of command line and uh, SE type stuff. But the world of Flutter looked uh, pretty interesting. Um, so there's no better way to learn Flutter than to write Flutter. Um, so I needed to write something that I would be passionate about and get to the end of it. So what I did, what I thought I'd do was uh, write an application that uh, can help me in my hobby, which is, uh, as you can see behind me, uh, lots of radios. Um, uh, so write a Flutter application uh, that could be useful with uh, my ham radio uh, hobby. And uh, essentially what it does is it speaks to uh, these radios. Um, and um, when you're on a radio, uh, you're using a particular frequency and you're using a particular modulation type. Um, and then it's a bit of a guessing game. If you want to speak to somebody, what the other person's on. And um, the idea was, well, what if it wasn't a guessing game? What if somebody could look up where I was uh, on the frequencies, uh, you know, which frequency I'm on and which modulation type I'm using, then uh, if they wanted to call me, they could call me on the right frequency, the right modulation. So that's, is that, that's what CatWeb is, that's the application. It uh, talks to your uh, radio and then advertises that on a web page um, so people can look up my uh, my ad sign and find out, uh, you know, what if I, well, first, if my radio is on and Secondly, if the radio is on, what am I? What am I listening to? Yeah, so it's like we're bringing all of that information on, to, you know, to the web, um, yep. in sort of real time. So if I wanted to see, you know, if I wanted to talk to you on the ham radio, I would just have to see on your profile if you're online and yep. where you're at. Um, when did you start making this? Well, that's a good question. Um, so. <laughs> Like everything else, you, you start with an MVP to see whether it's actually possible. Uh, and that was probably in the October timeframe last year. Um, and uh, well, just the way I work, everything was uh, really command line. There was no, uh, there was no clever stuff. So it was command line and HTTP. And uh, so I got, I mean, it worked, uh, but it wasn't beautiful. And that's really where Flutter came in was, you know, Make the uh, make the experience uh, a little a little easier to interact with. So uh, you know a UI rather than a bunch of command line scripts, um, and then um, make it easy for people to actually install it on their machines and get it up and running. So what that meant was, I wanted to have an application. I mean, ham ham radio enthusiasts use all different sorts of things. You know, they could be using Linux, Windows, uh, iOS, Android. Uh, Raspberry Pis, whatever it is. Um, so Dart and Flutter make most sense uh, because I could write a. You know, I'm lazy, like every other every other developer. You know, write a single bit of code and then deploy it on all those platforms without having to rewrite the whole code base, um, and then get it into the store. So that was actually probably the most challenging bit was actually not writing the code. <laughs> <laughs> writing code was like ridiculously simple. Um, uh, what was difficult was getting into stores. That's 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 actually pretty time consuming. So well, it wasn't me anyway. So I've heard you mention Flutter and I've heard you mention at sign. So let's get into yeah. how you, how you made this. Um, it sounds like you've used the app platform in Flutter. Uh, could we talk about those a little bit more? Well, what is Flutter? Yeah, sure. What is app platform? Uh, well, the, the app platform thing that I've been working on with. Uh, um, I, with every of the ad company, uh, and it's a it's a new digital identity where um, people can own their own data and uh, give access to that data. Uh, um, and what that means is that you can. I mean, it can be any data. I mean, I, I've proven that by it can be ham radio data. So, uh, and you can you can share it, um, and you can share it either 
one to one. So if I wanted to share some information just with Hakeem, then I could use at Hakeem. So you know, this is all the data I want to share with at Hakeem. Uh, and uh, the platform basically take care of that. I just save something locally. So you were who is who is for? It's uh, end-to-end -end decrypted and gets at Hakeem, uh, at Hakeem, and you can open it up. Um, but you can also do another thing, which I thought was pretty neat, was um, I can share information publicly. And I didn't want to write a web server. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I don't want to manage any backend. Nobody wants to manage servers. That's nobody wants. Nobody on the planet wants to manage a server. Even even people that manage servers don't want to manage servers. They're, they're, they're difficult, hard, and worrisome. Um, so I didn't want to have a back end. Um, I just want to share data with the public, and that's what the app platform could give you. You can you can share explicitly with one person and one person uh, only or publicly. Um, so in my case, I wanted to share everything publicly and uh, get that displayed on the web page. And the app platform actually gave me a way of doing that as well through a, an application that um, has been written called uh, App Wavy. Um, and that, you, know, you can go to uh, the app uh, wavy.ng and then type in my ad sign, which uh, in my case is at AI6BH. That's why uh, in Ham Radio, everybody has a call sign. And uh, you can look there and see where I am, what I'm doing, and what radios I've got on at the moment. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the ham radio community. Um, sure. You know, when you guys are um, talking on the ham radio, you know, what are you guys talking about? How do you guys come together? <laughs> uh, why is it important for people to be able to discover others? Um, I think that's really interesting. So. Ham radio is one of the most interesting hobbies uh, I, I think there is. Um, and the reason why is different people do different things. Um, obviously, we all like radio, um, but we all use radio in uh, different ways. Um, so there's different modes you can use it. Um, so one, one, one sort of uh, thing that I like to do is just... Uh, randomly call out and just uh, ask for a, you know, you know, say that I'm listening on a frequency and see whether anybody else happens to pick me up. And then uh, what we call rag shoe, just, uh, <laughs> just shoot the breeze and uh, talk to somebody you've never talked to before and uh, see what happens. So, I mean, I've, I've done that for years. And the fun bit for me is doing it with as little power as possible. So I normally run uh, a piece of wire in my backyard uh, that is maybe maybe 160 foot long, and then uh, use five watts, and then see who I can speak to. And I've spoken to I've spoken to people in the South Pole. I've spoken to an Italian uh, scientist on the South Pole. That was pretty hilarious. Uh, I've spoken to Italy. I've spoken to folks in Alaska, and uh, I I don't know who these people are. I just know they've got a call sign I can talk to. Them. Um, so that, I mean, that's that's what I like doing, uh, going out, setting up an antenna and just seeing who I can speak to with as little power as possible. We call that QRP, so low, low power operations. Uh, but many other people like doing different things. They just like uh, you know, uh, making contacts. Uh, and their, their conversation will be, um, what's your call sign? What's my signal report? I, you know, how well can you hear me? And uh, thank you very much and move on. And then they try and get as many people as they can um that's sort of broadly speaking that's called contesting so you're, you're sort of contesting and yeah other people use digital modes um and uh they they're essentially doing sort of sms type chatting uh over very long distances uh using using uh, the radio so uh I, i've met people in their 80s who tell me they're still learning so <laughs> there's like an endless things you can do with that with the radio as it turns out yeah, that's that's super awesome. That it seems like you've made some new friends, a lot of friends yeah. uh, through that. Um, when I hear, you know, all the call sign numbers, I and uh, thinking about that, I think that's a little, you know, feels a little archaic to have to say <laughs> that to represent yourself. So it's really awesome where the at signs, you know, can come in um, within the ham radio community. Why is it called ham radio? Uh, interesting story there. So um, in the early days of radio, uh, there was obviously professional uh, folks running radio stations and broadcast studios and all the rest of it. 
Uh, and then there was a bunch of amateurs like me who just wanted to use radio and we were given particular frequencies. And uh, uh, apparently it was a, um, a derogatory term, but as you know, uh, ham being a, ha a radio ham meant that uh, you you were uh, an amateur and uh, you were just uh, you know hamming it up, and um, you weren't very good. So, like all the best communities, where somebody talks uh, talks you in a derogatory term, you get, grab hold of it, you hold it tight, and say, "Yep, we are definitely hams." Uh, so that's exactly what we did, and. Uh, you know, I mean, you've seen that throughout history, right? When uh, you know, a derogatory term has been held onto the community and say, yeah, that's exactly what we are. So yeah, that's that's where Ham Radio came in from. So this whole time I've just been saying something really derogatory. Yeah, originally, originally it was completely uh, derogatory. We own it now. So uh, yeah, that's, that's us. Awesome. <laughs> um, well, I hope somebody has at Ham's somewhere already taken. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so how did you get started in the ham radio community? Because it seems like you have a really big passion all throughout it. You're developing it. You have some uh, sustainability aspects to it that you're really <laughs> interested in, some social aspects. How did at Colin like discover this? How long ago was that? And how did you get to where you are now? Um, so actually it was uh, when I was living in the UK, I mean, these days I live in California, but when I was living in the UK, I was, 11 years old, and uh, I think it's my mum said to me that uh, there's an amateur radio society down the road. Uh, I think it was called Cats. I think it was called Cats. It was in Coulson in South London. Uh, and so I went along to a, a couple of meetings, met some folks, and got intrigued. Um, I found that uh, hand radio back then was actually pretty difficult. You had to do a lot of exams and learn Morse code and all the rest of it. Uh, so actually di I diverted, I was you know, only 11, uh, but by 12, um, I had a, uh, I was just lucky. I, it was, I don't know what year it was, I have to do the calculations, but anyway, um, CB radio just came onto the, onto the scene in the UK. Uh, so I got, uh, I got into radio through CB and realized that there's a whole, whole other word out there. And then I got a job and then that was the end of it. Uh, for maybe 20 plus years, um, so it's working hard on other stuff. Uh, but fortunately, I got uh, I got um, uh, a break. I had a, a break in working. Uh, it was back in 2014, maybe. And um, a friend of mine said we should uh, do this huge um, cross Sierra uh, four wheel drive. I'm into jeeping and four wheel driving. Um, so I said, well, yeah, that's good. It's like 30 mile trip across the Sierras. Um, it's called the doozy. If anybody wants to know, look it up, you can look it up. It's uh, it's a fantastic trip, uh, but you're out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. So I said to Dave, uh, so, you know, if we get stuck, what do we do? He goes, well, yeah, I don't know. We, we won't get stuck. I'm like, I know we'll get stuck. So like, yeah, what, what's that get out of jail free plan? And, um, and when essentially we didn't have one and, uh, we did get stuck. Uh, so I thought, well, I've got I got two options. I can go buy a satellite phone, and then if I get if we get into trouble, we can get on the satellite phone. Or uh, that sounds really expensive. Satellite phone sales sound really expensive, right? So uh, anyway, I just um, what I should do is buckle down, I've got some time off. I'm going to get my amateur radio license, and uh, I'll just buy an amateur radio. That that'll be it. As you can see, before I spent much more on amateur radios than uh, I ever would have done if I got that sat phone. But yeah, that that's what happened. <laughs> Yeah, so it seems like you can't you can't live life without ham radios, and now you try to live without it with, with your job, and now it's part of your job now, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a, it's a fun community. Uh, you get to speak to people that you never would have spoken to before, uh, and um, what's really interesting is with the with the drone community, uh, we're getting a, um, I mean it used to be sort of a uh, older person's uh, hobby, you know, you retire, you get into ham radio, and uh, that's all good. But these days, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people using drones, and uh, if you get an amateur radio license, you can uh, use amateur radio frequencies to control drones. So we've got a lot of uh, younger folks joining the hobby, uh, really through drones. Uh, and in uh, in Europe, in particular in the UK, uh, CB radio seems to be up on the 
on the uptick at the moment. And uh, we're getting a lot of people that are bleeding over from the CP radio community into ham over there. Are we having a ham radio renaissance right now? I mean, I'd like to think so. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a fun hobby. If anybody wants to take a look at it, then it's, uh, it's certainly a fun hobby. I'll and definitely... If you, if you want to speak to me on it, then get yourself a license. Find out where I am on uh, using CatWeb and uh, you can give me a chat. Yeah, so let's get back to CatWeb. So you had developed this app, uh, yep. cross-platform thanks to Flutter. Um, yep. And, um, you know, you can see what frequency you are in real time. You can share that out with people. You've developed it starting since, you know, October. That's not that long ago. So that's relatively quick. Um, like you said, you spent more, more time just trying to submit it to the app stores yep. and actually developing that, which is a lot to say. Uh, but how is it going with CatWeb? You know, what, 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 what has happened recently? How have people been receptive to it? I want to know how it's going since you've been doing this project. Sure. Um, so I mean, the, that company has been very helpful. Uh, they uh, actually put a page up and uh, you, can, you can see it online. And also uh, for amateurs, um, you can actually get your uh, ad sign uh, match your call sign. So uh, on the app platform, everything has an ad sign. So on the app platform, you're on at Colin, but I'm also at AI6BH. Uh, and if you've got a, a call sign, then you can you can you can get your call sign as your ad sign, which is quite neat. Um, and you can get that for free. So definitely reach out to that. So we're seeing people doing that. And it's an CatWeb is an open source project. Uh, I had a few suggestions already on how to improve it. So uh, yeah. uh, at the moment, you go to an individual uh, website. So if you want to see where I am, you go to AI6. You know, uh, wavy.ng slash at AI6VH. Um, but the, one of the suggestions actually from uh, a uh, Silicon Valley um, ham radio club uh, member, uh, said, well, it would be nice to have a single page where you could see everybody using Kappa. Um, so uh, in my copious amounts of free time, Hakeem, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my next mission to make that, uh, make that, make it much more sort of community-based rather than you know, individual, uh, individual full signs. I think it was a really good idea from, uh, uh, from the community out there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm working on now. And yeah, people are signing up. Yeah. Uh, you just read my mind. I was about to ask what's next. You know, it seems like there's a really big social aspect to this, yeah. you know, and bringing whatever it takes to bring more people together. Uh, that sounds awesome to have a group functionality. Um, you know, I know you don't have copious amount of free time, but when do you think people can expect, you know, something like this or um, where can they go to help with something? Uh, like so then go, so then go to my GitHub page, I'm uh, ccomstab on GitHub and uh, you can see the open source uh, repo there. Um, yeah, just reach out to me there, that's fine. Uh, raise PRs, uh, comments, issues, that's fine. You can download the app uh, as it stands uh, in all the stores. So. Windows, Mac, iOS, um, and uh, Android. And if you're a Linux uh, person, then you can, uh, you can just uh, clean the repo and run it, run it that way. It's probably the easiest way of doing it these days. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's where we are. I think I, I'm going to give myself a goal that by the uh, end of the spring, uh, I have the uh, single, single page up. I know how to do it. Um, I just haven't done it yet. So uh, it's just... Uh, it's on the it's on the list. It will get done, just like uh, yeah, Catwood got done. Catwood version uh, two point zero will come out soon, as soon as I can get it out there. So end yeah. of end of the spring, I suspect. Well, uh, well, that's awesome. Let's give it up for Catweb, um, and thank you uh, for coming on, uh, Colin. Uh, it's really great to showcase another really interesting and niche app on the app platform that um, just makes it easier. And thanks to Flutter and um, allowing us, allowing this to be really easy and cross-platform. Um, yep. uh, thanks for coming on, Colin. Thanks, Akeem. Sweet.